What's up my fellow headbangers and foodies? Yes, you heard me correctly because today we're going to be talking about not just one, but two of my favorite things, which is music and food. So if you're a foodie that wants to learn how to make my Reese's Cheesecake Spin on the classic worms and dirt recipe, then this video is for you. Bonus points if you're a lover of heavy music. Because by the end of this video, you'll learn why the band we're talking about today is one of the greatest bands of all time, in my completely biased opinion, of course. And why the heavy 90s album that inspired this worms and dirt recipe is such an essential listen. That album is, you guessed it, Alice in Chains, Dirt. So let's dig into it. that don't know me. Hi, I'm Courtney, aka The Versatile Virgo, and I'm an independent writer and photographer for my own metal lifestyle website, theversatilevirgo.com, where I focus on everything from new music suggestions to live events and even musically inspired recipes, which leads me into today's video. Exclusively over at theversatilevirgo.com, I have a musically inspired recipe section that I like to call dinner in a vinyl. Sometimes though it's breakfast in a vinyl and in today's video it's actually going to be dessert in a vinyl. But hey, dessert goes with dinner too, right? Sometimes the recipes I create for an album stem from what I hear in the music. Other times maybe it's where the band is from. Kind of like this Creole vegan jambalaya recipe that I like to pair with New Orleans favorites, Exhorter. But in other cases, I like to play with food and drinks that are inspired by the album's cover. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you in today's video, where I'm showing you how to make my Alice in Chains inspired worms in dirt recipe. So I am going to be showing you step by step on how to make this, but don't worry about writing things down because I have the entire recipe linked in the description below, which you can find over at, you guessed it, theversatilevirgo.com. So when you're ready to make this, that's when you can go and grab the ingredients you're gonna need and reference that list. But today I really wanted to focus on showing you how I make this. Oh, and before we get started, you should know that this video isn't sponsored by anyone except for me and my website, theversatilevirgo.com, and my little Etsy shop where you can buy my DDTs, paints, and handmade bags. So if you'd like to help support what I do, or you're just looking for cool stuff for headbangers, I've linked both of those in the description below. By the way, I just want to mention that I am a self-taught home cook. I taught myself how to cook when I was 15 years old, just wanting to get healthier. And I saw a guy on TV, Sam the Cooking Guy, who that was kind of his niche and what he did, and it inspired me to learn how to cook for myself. So I always love cooking videos. I think they're super helpful, especially for someone like me, who's a visual but again, I am a self-taught home cook, not a chef. So don't come after me for my methods. This is just how I make things in my home and how I like them. And while these are not chef-created recipes, they are definitely crave-worthy. So let's talk about the album first so I can explain the ingredients that we're using and then we'll go from there. As I mentioned earlier, the inspiration for this musically inspired Worms in Dirt recipe comes from Alice in Chains iconic 1992 album, Dirt. Which, just by the way, this is a vinyl I got a while back, but in celebration of the album's 30th anniversary, Alice in Chains recently announced that they will be releasing a Dirt 30th Anniversary Edition box set that I have just been salivating over every time I see it as a mega Alice in Chains fan. If you have two, comment below and let me know. It can't 
be just me that so desperately wants this, especially as someone who collects music. And they're my all-time favorite band, like Hello, it's a no-brainer. I actually picked up the facelift anniversary box set last year and I did a whole unboxing video on it. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that in the description below too. But the one they're releasing for Dirt looks like it includes so many massive cool things for this album. So anyways, Dirt was the second full-length album that Alice in Chains had released, and while their prior album, Facelift, was definitely iconic, this for me is kind of the album that really sets the tone for Alice in Chains and where they fully stepped into who they were as a band and what their sound would be. In terms of the album's overall tone, it was completely different from Facebook, which featured one of their most iconic tracks, Man in the Box. Lane Staley, uh, this man right here, is easily one of my favorite vocalists of all time, period. And he is just devastatingly and crushingly haunting on dirt. A lot of subject matter on dirt is perceived to be about Lane's heavy struggle with addiction, especially on songs like Down in a Hole. But I say perceived because I don't think Alice in Chains has ever come out about any song really, at least in the Lane years, and said, yes, this song is specifically about X, Y, and Z. I actually can remember a quote I read a while back, and I think it actually might have come from Jerry Cantrell, where he had said something like, our music is about whatever the listener perceives it to be. This record is also home to iconic run hits like Brewster and my all-time favorite Alice in Chains song, Wood. And just overall, the band's sound has completely evolved from their last record. On Dirt, the music was darker, heavier, and just felt like it was scraping and digging at the deepest parts of the soul. What I love so much about Alice in Chains is the poetic way they present their music, and I mean that both lyrically and instrumentally. It's something they're definitely known for, and it's part of what makes Dirt such an iconic album. Because this is where those dark, poetic themes become even more seamless. Since this Worms in Dirt recipe is inspired by the iconic grunge era Alice in Chains album, the ingredients list is focused around the album's cover art. Since the cover is mostly orange, we're using orange food coloring here. However, you could also mix equal parts of red and yellow if you can't find orange. In my experience, it really depends on what store you go to. And just a pro tip, don't always assume that craft stores like Michael's are always gonna have orange food coloring because they definitely don't. And they let me down on several occasions where I did not want to go to Walmart, but I had no freaking choice. Anyways, the Reese's Cups, which aren't used in a traditional Worms in Dirt recipe, represent the darker orange and brown areas in the cover art. But so I could get the perfect ratio, I considered using not only Reese's, but also Oreos. This is not only for a more accurate dirt look, but also so it will help keep the Reese's Cups from falling through the actual pudding mixture. Oh, and speaking of which this recipe uses cheesecake jello pudding in lieu of what would normally just be chocolate or vanilla pudding. And those three ingredients are kind of like the holy trinity in what will make our food inspired version of this musical masterpiece. And when you taste it, I think you'll understand why I'm calling it a holy trinity of ingredients. A couple of things about this recipe before we get started. One, this recipe can be made ahead and it's actually recommended. But if you're getting a late start and need the rest of the day to make this recipe, I highly recommend you at least let it sit in your fridge for a minimum of four hours but preferably again overnight. I'm actually getting a late start on filming this video, so I think what we're gonna do is be 
before I film tomorrow's video, I'm going to actually take out the finished product and show you how the actual dessert turns out and everything like that. The orange color of the dessert may also deepen the longer that you let it sit, so that's another reason why I highly recommend making this ahead. That also may be dependent on the type of food coloring that you use. However, if you use gel food coloring, which is what I'm using, it will deepen the longer it is. I wouldn't really consider myself a dessert person. I'm more of a main course appetizer kind of gal. But if I'm cooking for a crowd, and especially if I'm making dessert, I want something that's going to be super easy, that can feed a crowd, that's going to be delicious, but that I don't have to spend a bunch of time on. Another bonus that you can make this ahead. No bake desserts like this one are a completely different story. They're quick, super easy, and usually consist of very basic ingredients like I'm about to show you. That's how I would describe this recipe in a nutshell. The most work you'll do is actually prepping the ingredients. And when I say prepping the ingredients, I'm also including unwrapping the reason cups so you can chop them up. I don't have a food processor. If you do, this is where you could use your food processor, but I do not. And I also try to avoid using plastic bags. Just trying to do my part to help the environment. So when it comes to crushing and chopping up the Reese's and Oreos that you're gonna use in this recipe, I highly recommend putting them in the fridge beforehand so that way they can cool down. And then if you're gonna do this like I do, once they are kind of cool, they'll solidify a little bit. And then you can just start chopping them accordingly and getting them into the finer, grungier pieces, I guess I want to call them. Again though, or you could use a food processor, or you could do it the really old school way that I used to do it when I was like 10 years old, where you stick a bunch of Oreos in a plastic bag and then just beat on them with a rolling pin until they're finally crushed. You can do that too, but I promise you, it takes way more time and more energy to do it that way, so I highly recommend just sticking both the Reese's and the Oreos in the fridge, then just chopping them up. Just make sure you're careful when you're chopping them up, but that also helps with them like not melting in your hands while you're doing it. Other than that, it's just a matter of mixing the Cool Whip, pudding, and food coloring. It's really that simple. And then once you've prepped your ingredients, it's time to layer and dig it. I recommend serving this worms and dirt recipe in either a large serving bowl or a trifle dish. You can also break this down into individual serving cups, but I don't recommend using something like mason jars. You want something that has a wider mouth on the top so it's easier to layer the ingredients. So you can do that too. I did try this with mason jars at one point and it just became a mess, so that's why I say stay away from mason jars. Make sure you use whatever you're serving it in has a wide mouth for properly laying the ingredients. I also just want to say that I've always associated worms and dirt with Halloween when I was growing up. I talked more about this in the versatileburger.com and the actual recipe, but I had a friend who her birthday was right before Halloween and I can remember her having a Halloween themed birthday party at a haunted house and Worms and Dirt was her birthday dessert for that particular party and that was the first time I had ever discovered it but I have heard of other families that will serve this in the summertime in a bucket with a shovel so it's also kind of a summertime dessert honestly it's an anytime dessert with how freaking good this is. Okay, so for this recipe, you're going to need some cheesecake flavored jello. I'm using sugar free, but it doesn't matter. That's just what the store had. Some milk, an eight ounce tub of Cool Whip, three cups of chopped or crushed Oreos, three cups of chopped Reese's, and of course, some gummy worms for garnish. And just so you're aware, this recipe does give you about eight to 10 servings. All right, so let's get to making this tasty worms and dirt recipe that was inspired by Allison Chain's dirt. Okay, so this is the large serving bowl that I will be using. Okay, and we're 
we're just gonna move that out of the way for right now because in a separate bowl, we're gonna combine our Reese's mixture and our Oreos. Highly recommend using a bigger bowl than this one if you have it, but I just moved and a lot of my stuff is missing from the sheet. It's all in there. Okay, and then in a separate bowl, we're going to combine our Jello pudding mix. And two cups of milk. Okay, and then we're just gonna beat this. Use a whisk or a fork, but we're just gonna beat this according to the package instructions until it becomes a little bit thicker. And just keep whisking until all the lumps are out. Okay. And then we're going to fold in the Cool Whip to this mixture. Okay, and then once that cool whip is folded in, then we're gonna start to add the orange food coloring. For this, I'm just using this orange food coloring you see here, and we're gonna use one teaspoon of that in here. Okay, there's your orange. And we're just gonna mix all of that together. It's looking pretty gnarly. I feel like this almost looks like a really cool like tie-dye experiment. It reminds me of my 90s youth. All right, so we're gonna keep mixing that in until it's pretty evenly mixed. And you can already see the orange is pretty deep right now, but I still wanna let it sit a little bit um, just in case that color does go a bit deeper. Any of that cool whip underneath that might not be totally mixed. And that cheesecake pudding. So we want it to have all the flavor. Can you see that right there? That's good stuff right there. All right, so now it's time to layer this dessert. So we are going to start by taking two cups of our Reese's Oreo mixture. This dish actually wasn't large enough for me to like successfully mix all of this together in this one bowl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump it in the bottom. It's not gonna make a difference. And I'm just gonna take some of it out. Um, and basically what we're looking for here is you want about two cups on the bottom of this to help kind of solidify the dirt, the bottom floor of the dirt. So it should be about two cups. Oh, it smells like candy, goodness, I can't wait to eat this. Okay, so I just kind of layer it in the bottom like that, so it makes one full layer. So I just kind of layer it in the bottom like that, you'll see it makes a full kind of layer. And then we're gonna take half of this pudding mixture and put it in the dish. So I'm just gonna go ahead in here. Let's hope I don't drop this and that you guys can see it. So that looks to be about half a little bit right there. And you're just gonna spread this over top of your bottom layer of the dessert. Again, not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is why I said uh, if you were using mason jars to do this, I wouldn't recommend it because you need something with a wide mouth on the top of the bowl in order to kind of like be able to layer it properly. So you'll just want to make sure that everything's covered. We can put that back. And now we're going to do the exact same thing. Just keep layering. So I'm going to take a little more of this mixture. And 
And you want to make sure that you're still going to have enough Oreos and things to layer for the top to create that dirt cover look that we were talking about earlier. So you can kind of spread this out. And then see how that helps solidify it from falling through the rest of the dessert. So then we are going to do one more layer. This literally smells so good as I'm making it. You might have been hearing my dogs pawing at their poles through this video and it's because they needed you to make something yucky like this for them. So again, spread that layer, make it an even layer. And of course, you could always double this recipe up if you're planning on serving a large, larger crowd. You can certainly serve this, but because this dessert is so rich and so sweet, it definitely does feed a larger crowd. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can eat this entire thing in one sitting. I don't recommend doing that just for, you know, bulk reasons, but it is super good and super hard to put down. Okay. So finally, we're gonna take this last little layer that I have here and layer this on top. You'll definitely want to spread it out again. Thinking of that Alice in Chains album cover, how we can just make it like this dirty and grungy as possible, right? Okay, and then our last step no, not licking the spoon, that's the final step. But our last step in actually making this is topping it with gummy worms. I like to just put some gummy worms and kind of sticking out. You can over like they're falling on top of the dessert or they're coming out of the dessert but just kind of play with it every year I look for like skeletons like the album cover looks like that I can do with this but of course every year I can't seem to find them so this is the way that we're going to do it this year I'm just going to use a little bit but you don't have to for this. It's really just for the overall polish of the look of the dessert. There you have it. That's before we put it in the fridge. So we're inside these before we put this in the fridge. But this is my Alice in Chains inspired dirt recipe. And I'll take some more videos and photos once it's fully solidified. So I know I initially told you guys that I was gonna come back the following morning and show you what the dessert looked like. And I initially planned on doing a video showing me eating it as well. But honestly, me and my husband were sitting on the couch watching some TV and it had been about six hours until we finally decided we just couldn't take it anymore and had to have some of this delicious Alice in Chains inspired worms in dirt. So now that you've seen me make my Alice in Chains inspired worms in dirt recipe, I want to see you do it. Send me your pictures of your creations over on Instagram by tagging me under at the underscore versatile underscore Virgo. And if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel because I have even more heavy music related videos on the way, including more musically inspired recipes. So make sure you don't miss one by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and stay heavy.